Okay, got it wrapped up, deburred. So, slides nice, not much play. So, that part is almost done. We just need to uh, you know, drill a hole to uh, mount the bracket that's gonna hold the finger. I think what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and drill and tap a hole for uh, you know this to go into, since it'll come through here. And it'll be sticking out, so get this on camera. So she needs to go in there, so she'll re be retained. So I'm just gonna knock that out. No need to watch me uh, drill and tap a hole. Well, today I think I'm gonna tackle making the arbor for the fixture. Hopefully you can see my chicken scratch. So this is gonna be the arbor here. You know, the, I've gone through a couple different designs in my head and playing it around, changing things, because the challenge is it needs to be universal, you know, to be able to handle an eighth inch diameter, or I'm sorry, eighth inch thick, you know, all the way up to checking my stuff. I got, you know, five eighths thick cutters. So, you know, it has to be able to adjust. And that was the issue I was coming up with. Tried a couple of designs. We're gonna try this. So what this will do is this will go in Holding the cutter, gonna have to make a spacer, and then what the spacer will do, will space it off the distance. Let's see if I can get it out of the light. You know, off the column to about here, you know, the width of the base, till it gets to the sliding fixture. Um, that's the best design I can come up with, so it'll you know, accommodate the different thickness of the cutters, and being that we're going to be snugging from this side, I want to do a threaded hole, but I'm going to go ahead and heel coil it since we'll be pulling in aluminum, you know, on the back side. And I'm also considering maybe even doing some sort of, uh, you know, a spring and a wing nut so I can keep the right tension. Because, you know, obviously after you sharpen one, you've got to be able to move it. And you don't want the arbor turning, but you want just enough tension squeezing it between the two shoulders here you know so i think we're going to try this design hopefully it'll work I'll take you guys over and we'll get on the lathe and start making it and then just clean the face up Go in about 10, see if that'll clean her up. See that move you in, but man, that positive rake aluminum cutting insert does a really nice job on leaving a good finish there. So we just need to uh, whittle down, let's see, uh, one inch 600 thou. Of course, it needs to be one inch to be able to have the uh, cutter slide on it. I was hoping to break a chip. That ain't gonna work. Let me increase the feed rate. I've been playing around with the feed rate, see if it's any better. I could get it to break, but it wouldn't. This is a little bit better, but the surface finish is horrible, so it's still not much better. They're long, but they're breaking after they come off. It's still. <laughs> 
play around some more here. Stuff is killing me here. Uh. Well, I forgot to turn the camera on, but uh, we're there. So I could have got a little more footage. So it's about a thou under. Shooting for one, it's like one, 999, so it'll be alright, I guess. Let's go ahead and get that edge broke right there, real quick. So I think what we're going to do is go ahead and we'll, you know, drill and tap it since we got it here. And then once we get that done, that's it on this side really. Just have to part her off, and then we got to make that spacer. Don't need to go real deep for the heel coil. Zero my DRO. Just going about 600 thou, which should be good. If you guys can see it, I'm just gonna hand start it. This aluminum. This is the tap that comes in the kit. Give us a little WD. If I can do this with you guys right in the middle. In case you're new to machining, what I've been talking about, so this is a heel coil kit. Basically, it's a thread repair kit, so it comes with a drill, the tap you need, a tool to insert it, and the insert itself. So, these are the little inserts, basically. Like I said it looks like a coil. This is your installation tool. So you screw it on, and what we're going to do is we're going to insert it in here, and then you've got a tang. This is what retains it, so you can drive it in there. Once you get it where you need to be, then you break that tang off right there. I like using these in aluminum, especially when you're going to be using a fastener in and out, in and out, because you know, otherwise the threads are going to wear, and small threads in aluminum are pretty fragile to begin with. So. It's not going to last, the next thing you know. Well, I'm going to have to move you. You're going to be uh, stripping them out. So It just screws in like this. Hopefully you guys see that. Pretty good. And what you want to do is get it to about a one thread below the face here. And in some applications, I'll even use a little bit of Loctite to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. There we go. So now we're good. Let me, uh, I'll break the tang once we get this thing out. Next thing we need to do is go ahead and part it. Let's get this baby parted off. And okay, had to change the GoPro battery. Let's see if 
just gonna get this parted off without any issues. get the chips out of there I might make it or parting tool might not be long enough ah we're there hold on Let's see if we can get her nice alrighty let me uh, turn this around Get it uh, indicated in the forge aisle. We'll clean this face up. We'll break that edge. And I think this part will be done. Alrighty, so I've got it uh, indicated in. Got a piece of uh, flashing to protect it so the jaws don't gall into the arbor there. Ground up a piece of high speed steel. Figured we'd try to uh, go a little old school, see how the surface finish is gonna look. So we'll give this a shot. I had to move you because turning the compound a lot down handles in the way. Y'all are still in frame. Let's see if I got this on center height. I'm off a smidgen, maybe. Got a piece of uh, that one and a half inch bar stock. Let's go ahead and make that half inch thick spacer. Let's continue on with this high speed steel. They'll be cleaned up and then we'll Don't need much, just need to kiss that outer edge. And high speed steel did nice. All right, so now we need to basically, we'll drill it and then bore it out to a one inch hole. bar is all set up. I already took a skim pass, cleaned the hole up. Uh, the last drill was uh, three quarters of an inch. And after, actually the drill did, you know, the drilled 750. So I did a little bit of a skim pass. We're at 755 now. So we got to go in, what, about 122 and a half thou to uh, get us to one. So let's just go ahead and nibble away. <laughs> Try it dry, see how she likes it. I'm the hole there. Alright, I'm gonna rinse and repeat. Take another 20. 
Well, if I did my calculation right, this should be 993. That's what this gauge pin is. All right, I don't know if you can hear that or not. So I'm a piston fit there, sweet. All right, so we've been, uh, been on our numbers. We don't have any flex in the boring bar, so really we need another seven and we'll be good to go. Do a little bit of a WD for a better service finish. Let's see if we can take out seven with this carbide insert. the truth let's see if we uh, got her or not looks like a good fit cool all right let's uh, break a couple edges and part this thing off and it'll be done So let me show you what I've come up with. Here it is assembled. So the spacer is in there. That's the arbor we made. And originally I would just put you know, a socket head cap screw back there holding it. But it wants to you know, tighten or loosen depending on which way you turn your cutter here. Because we have the finger and if we you know, dust off an edge and get in the frame, then we need to rotate it you know, and be able to do it like this. That way we can keep constant tens tension on it without it loosening or tightening up by adding the spring back here. You know, the only thing would be that, you know, different size cutters, we're going to have to keep a couple different size screws and, you know, maybe a different length spring if, uh, you know, we're doing a thinner cutter like that or even down to one eighth inch thickness. But, uh, so far she's coming along. I think uh, we need to design the uh, finger holder mount and I think what I want to do is make it adjustable. So I've been kicking around the, that idea of how to do it. Probably you know, some sort of you know, threaded rod with you know, a nut down there so you can adjust it up or down and get it to exactly where you want. You know, Because if you want to dust off this angle right here or if you know, the cutter's getting worn and you need to add, you know, more relief to get that sharper angle. You know, you can turn it down just a smidgen. That way, you know, the finger is not set at a specific height. Just to uh, try to make it more universal. I'm trying to think ahead. Hopefully this will work. It may not be needed, but I don't know. And then, of course, lastly, I need to uh, cut some of this off because it's excess. And then I'm probably going to go around and, you know, chamfer all the edges that need to be chamfered. So that is it. It's uh, about dinner time, so we'll pick this up tomorrow.